It's time for more speed paint. <laughs> Bits. <laughs> Welcome back Hobby Maniacs. I'm Rob Bear from SpikyBits.com and in this video we're going to show you everything that we figured out about the new Speed Paint 2.0s that uh, Army Painter sent over to us. So obviously Speed Paint is kind of a hot button issue for more, more than one reason I suppose. Uh, but uh, getting this product a little bit early to kind of check out, um, played around with it for about the past two days, and I, I got a lot to say about it. It's a, it's a very interesting offering. It includes metallics for the first time. Um, you know, they, they call them speed paint metallics. We'll talk about that a little bit here in this video as well, and uh, and just have some fun with it. So uh, let's uh, let's dig. Let's let's just jump right in. So as far as products go, what's going to be available on the market? I figured that would be a good place to start so we've got the speed paint mega set in the studio here and it's a mega set is you know normally from army painter unlike the mega set that i'm going to hold up in the little window here from last year this was all of their colors but normally the mega sets are just like a selection of some of the best colors and, and things that they have for whatever particular line they're doing the mega set on so starting at the top they're going to have a complete set available um i think this one comes out in june if i recall correctly it's 379 it breaks down to about 420 a paint but that doesn't include this ginormous uh, speed paint medium right here uh, that you can see in the picture or the little uh, tray or the extra brushes and stuff so i mean that brings down the cost you know probably around four dollars a paint ish now we know that the paints are going to be costing more um so you know it's it's i, th I think it's a, a good deal if you're looking to get all of them all 90 of them my biggest complaint was the lack of selection um and you know because i've been trying to paint some legion figures in you know and or camo and i'm like man i gotta I gotta use some army painters, I gotta use some GWs, and you know, it's just, I'd rather just have one bottles, you know, to go to and not have to like mix and match and even mix in the ranges. Then they've got the complete set, uh, or that is the complete set, excuse me. Then they've got the metallic set, which is, they're, they're calling them speed paint metallics. We'll talk a little bit about that. If you watch the video up, up on YouTube on their channel, they're basically gonna be a two tone kind of thing, not a three tone, which is basically what speed paint is. You know, you get the you get the highlight, you get the kind of like the base coat, and then you get like the dark, like recess kind of thing. You're not gonna get that three level kind of uh, thing from these paints where the the speed paint part comes in is it's just easier to apply and you are going to get some some shadows but not not a whole lot as you can kind of see in the picture there um and we'll, we'll paint some stuff here in a minute too so there's 10 colors of this um and i'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute that comes down to 420 a paint as well i didn't get all these colors we got the hoplite we got the talos bronze and i think we got the broadsword silver so those are good colors. I, I, I personally want to check out this golden armor because doing custodies, that might be pretty dope. And then we come to the mega set, which again, is just a really good selection all around. I mean, look at all these dope greens in here. You've got some, uh, you can't really see them, but there's a whole bunch of different pinks. You've got some flesh tones and it's really hard to find a good flesh tone in the contrast style paint we'll just call it and uh i like the flesh tone in this it's called peach peachy flesh i think um and I, that that one's a banger I, I really like that one i think i think a lot of people are going to use that one going forward and then there's that and that will be out that will be first out of the gate in april 22nd and then there'll also be singles and things there'll be a half rack uh that retailers will have uh, i think later on this summer as well so that's all the products that are coming out as far as have been announced I would imagine that's probably going to be all of them. Um, so let's jump into the what we have in the studio today. So here's the mega set. Um, I really think this is a really good uh, kind of breakdown of colors here. You got to look at all these greens. I was trying to show you these purples and stuff, but it's hard to see in the picture. So you've got some really dope purples and some some more up here. You got some flesh tones. Uh, you've got some other types of skin tones too, like noble brown, warrior brown. Those are going to be pretty cool depending on what you're trying to paint. Like if you're doing some uh, Wakanda style stuff for like MCP. Um, good, good stuff there. There's a really good, and you can really see it on the back here. And I actually have this kind of set up next to my desk when I'm when I'm painting, just so I can kind of see all the different colors. And then go snatch them out of the box, and you get the three uh, metals. Now, when you open this up, now I think 
I think the one that's going to go to consumers is going to have a mixing tray in here. Mine doesn't have a mixing tray. So there's some stickers and a brand new paint guide, which is cool to see. And some other quality control things. And, you know, if you want to put the stickers on things like, yeah, just bought an iPod, that'd be pretty cool. There's going to be one tray that's empty. Don't worry about that one. I imagine that's where some of the free stuff's going to go and then a brush and everything. And then it goes into all of the amazing paints in here. Now, as far as the paints themselves go, let's take a look. So here's my magic brown, or magic blue rather. And then here's my magic blue from last year from Army Painter. And you can tell, well, it's really hard to tell them apart. <laughs> it's actually almost nearly impossible. They actually have the same uh, SKU number two to WP uh, 2014 on both of them. And um, the material is a little bit different between the two. And this one's a little lighter, so I'm able to tell that that is uh, the newer speed paint there. And this one I've had for a little while, so it's got a little divot on it. But other than that, it's really hard to tell. So that might be a little weird <laughs> for some people, I suppose. So just kind of keep that in mind before you go uh, mixing up your paints. And I'm sure the question on everybody's mind at this point is do these paints reactivate or is reactivation an unwanted side effect of the new speed point speed paint 2.0s and i can tell you right now it, it is not it, it's not even a feature it doesn't even exist anymore um and you know when we painted this space marine with the first speed paint they sent us we didn't notice activation reactivation because we just one coat and done it and just kind of moved on and made our content and everything. And we, we didn't try to apply more paints and things to it. We, we followed the directions on the bottle as instructed. Now, we've painted some stuff already. And what I did was waited for it to dry the recommended amount of time. They say about two hours. And I'll be honest with you, um, it here's what I painted with it. And it took less than two hours to dry. Um, and I was doing some touch ups and stuff on it. Um, with the different uh, trim paints, which will show you how to get this kind of effect right here if you're if you're interested in painting some more space marines. But it didn't reactivate. So let's take a look at the um, at the, what we painted and the time it took in, in actually trying to reactivate it with a, a wet brush and also you know just kind of uh, doing some other stuff that we could to try to mess with the actual paint. So it's been about two hours or so. I was doing some chores around the house and now it's time to kind of see what we're working with here. See if everything has dried okay. So I'm gonna wet the brush here. And I know one of the things that people are curious about is if uh, you know if there is that unwanted feature of reactivation and it looks like these are completely dry with a wet brush. There is no issue. Um, reactivation really was kind of a, I guess, more of an unwanted feature than a real thing. Like we didn't even notice it. Let's try to put some green on here when we used this stuff the first time because we just did one coat. And you know, it's cool that you can come back. Oh yeah, that's very vibrant. Uh, it's cool that you can come back and do another coat onto this stuff. Um, and I'm wondering if how it removes because. It says that you can work with it for up to 20 minutes. So that coat came off, which is nice, and it just kind of left the coat underneath it. So you can definitely readjust and reapply uh, within that 20 minute window that they're talking about now with, the, with this new stuff here, which I really dig. And then I wanted to see about doing a second coat on some of the lighter stuff, like that peach color there that I was really interested in because it's really hard to find a good flesh um, in any of the contrasty slash uh, speed paint type paints. And I felt like I didn't get good coverage over these eyes right here. So I want to go back and hit them again. If I can. Maybe it's just the way the model is. I'm not getting good coverage. There we go. Okay, cool. So it looks like it goes right over with no re reactivation either. Now, I think some of these metals, they do, you know, they're, they mentioned that they're more of a two-tone. They're not, they're not the full three-tone. They're going to, they're going to go over smoother, which is the kind of the, the speedy part, but they're not going to get that depth that you're going to get from the speed paint itself, which is 
you know, I guess to be expected just because the the metal flake and stuff. So I'm not, I'm still, still wondering if this is for me yet. And we're going to work on that a little bit more, uh, probably later. So when it comes to the application of these paints in general, they are much brighter this time around. These are the old, uh, speed paint, the 1.0s from our video or several videos that we recorded, uh, about a year and a half ago. This was a golem sand, I believe magic blue. I think this was the orc skin. It might've been the cam, the orc camo. Um, and then this was watered down blood red and that was normal blood red. Now blood red isn't in this set uh, that I've seen it yet. So we use, what did we use? We used bright red instead in uh, the mega paint set, which is pretty close. So here's the old ones. And then here's the new ones, which you can already tell they are way brighter than uh, the older stuff. And I mean, they seem to coat a lot better as well. Now we, we don't have a sand golem. So I think instead I used something pretty close, which was a uh, ruddy fur. Yeah, ruddy fur was this one right here, which would also make an excellent, excellent flesh and also excellent, excellent leather. Magic brown, orc skin, which is way different in this. So I think that was the camo we used up here. Um, and then we did the two different blacks that come in the set. So they brought back um, the normal grim black, which is the top half of this. And then the gray is under the second half or the bottom half of this is the occultist, occultist cloak. So this is actually two different blacks here. So one's the gray and one's the black. And you can tell, well, they have some different properties depending on how you look at it. And then the bright red right there, which is very much so a bright red that you can tell just by looking at that. It's got more orange in it, it looks like. Um, and I, for I forgot to look to see if there would be a uh, blood red in the big set here. So I'm scrolling back through that article to see if there is. And there is, it does look like there is a blood red, but it's going to come in the complete set. So we don't have that yet. I would imagine it's very close to that if I had to guess because the magic blue is so close right there. Now, because some of the different stuff we did, and then we'll show you how to how to paint um, something like that space marine right there. We, we tried a bunch of different things. And one of the things that I tried first was right here. And this was where we took um, a, from a black undercoat we just did a zenithal of metal. And then we took the same red, the same green. We used this, um, uh, what was it? Ancient honey, which is a really uh, vibrant, well, normally vibrant yellow, uh, magic blue. And then we used that uh, gray, I think it was ashen gray right there. And you could tell when it's over a dark color that isn't quite that, that white, this is what's gonna happen. So this is over just straight white primer as you can see at the bottom right there. And the, the results are, are very good. Now this is uh, the same colors over a dry brush of black or a black primer in a dry brush of white. So same exact colors, they really get muted down once you start not having those really poppy whites to kind of go off of right here. So that kind of gives you the, the idea of the two different things. So when you want to do the Zenith all uh, slap chop method, value highlighting, I believe is what the traditional wording is called for it. You're gonna want to go as bright as possible. Otherwise you're gonna end up with kind of these muted tones right here. So just kind of keep that in mind. And then another experiment we tried was we were messing with the metallics. So this is just the metallics themselves over a black uh, dry brush or a black base coat with a white dry brush um, with a little Zenithal on there, uh, just like you would slap chop or um, the value highlighting. And you can see they're, you know, they're pretty flat. They're, 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 they're flat, they're two-tone. You're gonna get some depth, but you're not gonna get a whole lot of depth. And you can kind of make the depth based on doing the, the, the cutbacks and things or doing the dry brush up. But it's at the end of the day, it's not gonna be the, the speed paint effect. So just be aware of that. It's not, not gonna quite be that bold. And then here is the metallics themselves over a white base coat. So there's your uh, bronze, there's your broadsword, steel, there's your gold uh, that came in this, which one was it? Hoplite gold. And then I messed around with some uh, flesh colors. So there's the peachy uh, which I which I definitely love right there. The peachy flesh is the, the top half of this cap. And then the bottom half is what they call, what is that one? Goddess Glow. And Goddess Glow is more like a chestnut ink from back in the day, if you remember that. Um, that one's pretty dope. 
and then scrolling over we did a couple different colors here i'm trying to remember what they were i believe it was the real important one that was with the other two flesh colors here and we already showed you ruddy fur ruddy fur is this right here which you could also use as a flesh color as well which is uh, really dope so that's what they look like over just a straight white uh, base coat now let's talk about how you can actually paint up your miniatures with this system. So option number one, which is perfectly okay, is just spray your miniatures white and just apply, you know, whatever color you want straight over it. And this is roughly what it's gonna look like. Now, that being said, de uh, models that have detail and depth like this are gonna paint up way better than models like Space Marines that have a lot of flat areas and flat curved areas. And the reason I mention that is because we have this Space Marine right here that we painted up that looks way different than our original Space Marine from the Speed Paint 2.0. Even though we did pretty much everything the same, the, the paint itself is just lighter. Um, it, it's just a lighter paint in general, and it, it presents a little bit more challenges to work with um, because you do have about 20 minutes to kind of work with it um, on the model before it really kind of sets. And it set for me in about 20 to 30 minutes dry time. Now we waited two hours before we, you know, went back and tried to mess with those, those heads earlier in the video here. But when I was doing some touch-ups and things, because when you're doing this blue, you're gonna get some stuff on, you know, the the metal here, and you're gonna get some some blue on, uh, <laughs> that was an alert, I don't know why that, that came through. You're gonna get some blue on, you know, just areas that you don't want, or you might get some brown on the blue, and you can try to go back and tighten it up. And I noticed that I could do that. So there's, there's an interesting drying time, uh, depending on your atmospheric conditions. And it was about 53 degrees here, like I was saying, in about, you know, 50-ish uh, percent humidity. So that is kind of something to kind of take into consideration here. And there's two different ways, you know, that you can actually get this sort of depth kind of look, because this is not sprayed just white, like, like we did right here. What that is, is, you know, the value highlighting or the slap chop that you've heard so much about, where you take an airbrush and you just kind of go through and you airbrush the miniature up, like at a uh, kind of a heavy zenithal kind of like angle like this, right? And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna get the, the tops really light and things. And this is the first step. Now I know before everybody out there, I, was, I hate airbrushing. I'm not, I don't have an airbrush. I don't want, I'll show you how to, <laughs> don't worry. I'll show you how to do it without that. The second step is you can come in and you can do some cutbacks with black and then hit up all your metals. And really you only need to do metals on Space Marines. And we've showed you this to you before in another video and I'll, I'll link it above so you can check it out. But basically you just do all your metals. You do some cutbacks in black and you seal it up uh, with some uh, matte coat because the next step is you're going to want to give it a, a wash, a black wash where it gets a little bit darker. And what that's gonna do is create the contrast between the, the, the highs and the lows. So you'll be able to get in there and uh, create that definition when you put this, this bead paint actually on it. Um, so it's a good idea to do all your metals and then do the wash at the same time. You can do an optional heavy dry brush where you get areas where you get little details like that if you want. Um, you don't have to. You could even start right here and not even do the black wash and just go forward from here. It would be a little bit brighter, but it, it, you know, it might not have the depth that you're looking for. And then the next step would be to block in all of those areas right there with uh, the new speed paints. And I wanted to mention that these are some two new colors right here. So this was, uh, let's see, this was Buddy, what, what was it? Ruddy Fur was this one in the middle here. So it's a great little, um, uh, it's good for like leathers and stuff, which I thought was pretty good. And then Satchel Brown is these two darker colors right here. This is that bone color that we talked about, bony um, matter, I believe. And then the, the red that came with the box was right there. And then the red was uh, used for the eyes. And everything else was just a normal uh, paint from them, like uh, True Copper, Plate Mel. I just used the air paints because they're easy to apply uh, and did that black wash over all the metals and the model right there. And you can see you get, you know, you get that depth where the, the airbrushing's high, the blacks, the black cutbacks were low, and that's what all that is. And it's, it's crazy because it is a lot brighter than the same exact thing a year ago with the same exact magic blue pretty wild right 
But say you don't want to do all that. Hey, I don't have an airbrush. I hate airbrushing. I don't want to learn it. Cool. No big deal. Just take out you know, whatever dry brush you want to use and put a really heavy dry brush coat over black primer and you'll get something like this. And then just go in with, and pick out all your metals like I just showed you. You can do an optional black wash at this time if you want. I would definitely recommend black doing a black wash on all the metals. You don't necessarily have to do it on the, the, the armor plates and things. And then from there, same thing. Apply all of your paints and you're going to get something that looks like this guy right here. Whereas he is a lot darker than what we just showed you. So here's with the airbrush, here's with the not, with the dry brush worked up and painted. Uh, it's a lot darker, but it's also about the same, <laughs> the same darkness and things that uh, the one from last year and with just the normal speed paint is too. So that's, uh, that's kind of wild once you start thinking about it, that it looks very similar to uh, the coats from last year. So either way, um, you're gonna get something very similar. This one's a lot more work. This one isn't so so much work when it comes to just doing a really heavy dry brush coat and picking out some details. Uh, you eliminate about three steps. So this is way, way, way faster. Um, probably a lot easier just because you don't have to be as careful when you're when you're dry brushing and things. And you can get those nice crisp uh, detail works. Um, because you're not cutting back with the black like on the, the elbows and things. So really it just comes down to personal preference at that point. And at the end of the day, uh, you know, what I figured out from working with this stuff is the the older, the, here's the color swatches from last year's paints. And there's, you know, 24 of them. And, I, and here's what I messed around with for this video right here. And you can see the magic blues are a lot different. The, the new paints are a lot lighter. Here's the blood red. Here's the red we got in this. I think it was called bright red. So it is, it's similar, but it's definitely got more orange in it right there. And then here's your flesh that came in it. There's your peachy flesh up here. And you can see that this peachy flesh is way way different than this one right here and i really really like that and i think a lot of people are going to like that um so you know and then there's just a lot of lighter of color so you got to kind of play around with it here's your uh black right here and then here's your black over here and then here's the um the kind of the gray that came in the last one and here's that that same type of gray um this one's a, a, a cultist cult and i forget what this one i think it was graphon or something like that so there's gonna be a little bit of differences and then you can see right here, here's our metals. Um, here's the bronze, here's the actual airbrush bronze that's, uh, or copper rather, and I haven't tried their copper out. I'm really anxious to try their copper out. Here's the, uh, the metal we used here. Here's the metal we used on the uh, speed paint metal right here. So those are not really a good comparison because this is plate and this is darker, but you kind of get what I'm saying here. Like, and then here's our yellows. This was the yellow. Um, it's more like a mustard, the, the honey one in here. And then here's the one from the other one. So they're a lot lighter. You want to play around with them. They work a lot differently. You can do multiple coats. Um, there was a couple spots on this one where I went and did a few more coats on it just to get uh, some better, like down in here where the um, mold lines were, it was uh, kind of sloppy. So I wanted to touch that up. It's still not the best, but that's okay. I'm not too super worried about it. The black is across here, across the bolter, which I thought was pretty good. Um, that turned out pretty well. But you can see there's there's some touch-ups to be had here and there. It's not going to win you paint awards, but it's going to get you a fully painted army very, very quick on, on the tabletop right there. And just keep in mind, when it comes to the metals, like I was saying, the metals are, are, are they're, they're not speed paint. They're kind of a different thing. They're only going to have like a two-tone, like they mentioned in their video. They're not going to go as deep with uh the color look that you that you expect from a traditional army painter paint right here for me i don't really feel like these metals are for me um i'm just going to keep using the traditional kind of style metal that i do i just use their airbrush paint i just hit it with a black wash and i just keep moving and it, it it works for me you know i thin it down a little bit we've talked about that and just check out the videos on how to do all that that isn't a straight black wash but it works for me and and i'm pretty happy with it i don't feel like i'm going to use the uh, army painter um the, the new speed paint metallics they, they're just kind of not for me i want to play around with them some more with the golds and things 
but I don't think uh, I don't think they're really quite for me uh, personally. But definitely check check those out. I don't think there's there's anything wrong with checking those out because they they go on very smooth and they are very easy to work with. And sometimes with metals, you have to build up one metal underneath it. Like if you want a really rich gold, you got to do like a 10 bits or some darker kind of iron or bronze underneath it. Whereas this will just go on over a black coat. It'll go on over a white primer coat. Like it's just boom, it's there, you know? So there's something to be said for that too. So check them out, play around with them, uh, see what you think. You know, um, I, I feel like there really is no wrong answer when it comes to this stuff, you know, with how you use it, because it's pretty much designed to use it anyway. Um, but I would like to caution one, one piece of advice is that when it comes to doing stuff like this and things with a lot of detail, well, these are the newer ones, it's going to look great if it has a lot of detail, but it's going to be a little bit of a chore and you might want to consider using the older speed paint on things that have these rounded edges and have more area to kind of spread out if you can wait if you can let it dry fully i feel like the older speed paint might be the way to go in a lot of cases because there's just there's a lot of fiddling to kind of be had where this one didn't take as long to make look you know to just get it on there one coat and go this was not one coat and go um you know i had to play around with it a little bit and you know we got it to where it looks great but it was probably like one and a half coats once I really got like figuring out how to work with it. And I, and I was like, gosh, you know, I probably would have just been happier with the older speed paint um, for me, but there's only 23 of the colors. Now you're talking there's 90 colors. So just be aware when it comes to like things like Space Marines and anything with like large flat panels, you, you're going to want to kind of do a, do a, you know, a, just a kind of a check, like what works better for me? Is it the newer ones or the older ones? And I think if I was to paint up this army today, these ultramarines, I would want to use the older speed paints personally. Um, I had no problems with them. I didn't even know reactivation was a thing when I was using them. And this to me was, and still is the best space marine I've ever personally painted. And you know 30 years of hobby in. and when it comes to this guy i'm like yeah i kind of made it work but i'm not super happy with it to be quite honest with you but i could see where if i was doing something like some big critter or some dude that looks like you know this or the guy on the front yeah i think speed paint 2.0s would be great for this but like i said that's not my wheelhouse and that's not where i'm at regardless i will be using these on my Star Wars Legion figures because I think they are gonna be amazing for it. Um, and I can't wait to kind of pick out some new colors because I was going through and doing all of my color selection and things when I got, you know, for my, my new guys here. And I'll show you kind of what I was, so I got all my, my color selections here and I was doing all these things and, you know, I was really getting into it and doing all my tests and I wrote up my, 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 uh, recipe right here and now we've got so many more choices look at all these choices so much room for activities so i can't wait to jump in on that but either way i don't think you can go wrong with the new speed paints it's going to be every journey is going to be different i feel like for every hobbyist but having a better tool or having a a faster tool in your hobby arsenal that gets you on the tabletop playing faster is there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever and i feel like that's good. The Speed Paint 2.0 is really going to kind of um, hit that spot, so to speak. So that's it for this one. Thank you for watching our uh, kind of thoughts and review of the new Ar Army Painter Speed Paint 2.0s. Uh, like I said, they will be out in stores very, very shortly. So get your pre-orders in if they tickle your hobby pickle. If not, hey, I get it. You know, just do whatever works for you. If you liked that video feature, consider supporting us over at patreon.com and get back in the mail each month a miniature crate full of some of the stuff we review here as well as some of the top 3D artist designs out there too to help support what they're doing. Plus, discount coupon codes from some of those same manufacturers. They're yours to keep whether you cancel or stay on. Just it's totally up to you. Obviously, we want to keep you as happy as possible. So check it out over at patreon.com forward slash spikybits.